Thanks, everybody, for uh, waiting through my technical difficulties trying to get a uh, display up and wor working. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about threat hunting with event logs in PowerShell. Um, we're pretty much not, what I'm looking at doing with this talk is looking at expanding um, into newer solutions if you don't have like a seam in place that you're already using, or we're looking to how to build upon our existing seams and put more tools into place to be able to um, kind of tweak those rule sets that we're using and get better logic and better things out of it. And then the last thing is kind of looking at ways that we can maybe move beyond our critical infrastructure because a lot of our monitoring and things like that, we're only focusing on the critical infrastructure. We're not really focusing on the entire big picture. So before we go down this whole a um, little bit about me, my name is Justin Williams. Um, I am an information security professional. Uh, prior to that, um, I've worked in numerous different areas in IT. I've been in help desk, database administration, uh, primarily development. I'm an absolute gigantic fanboy of Microsoft products and PowerShell and as, it, as a whole. Um, and then currently, I just am actually three weeks into a new manager's gig and an information security role. So. Um, the other thing I want to touch on is I am part of the Omaha OWASP chapter leadership. So if any of you want to make a trip over to Omaha and talk about AppSec with our group, um, just reach out to me. <clears throat> All right, so kind of some of the goals for this talk is first off and foremost, I want to talk about where do we look for events in Windows um, and how do we get at that information. Um, what files and things like that and logs might be useful to find information? Where can you look to extract data from those logs? Um, kind of do a little bit of an introduction into Sysmon. Um, not really a deep dive, but more so working with the output that it gives us after we install it and we're running it. Um, and then the last thing is, is I want to give everybody an introduction into PowerShell to put everything together. Because as I found with administration and those rules, just adding the tiniest little bit of scripting like that into your arsenal kind of makes everything more powerful and makes you a lot more useful in being able to determine what's going on in your environments. So first and foremost, we're going to look at what our typical SIEM scenario is. Um, most of the time, we're going to be logging servers, and that, that's pretty much it. So nothing else. Um, workstations are going to be what's spending most of your time actually accessing unprotected areas of the internet. Not many people are going to be surfing the internet on their servers. Not many people are going to be downloading malicious tools onto their servers. But your end users are going to. So at most with the workstations, we might be looking at logs and event logs and things like that. But what we're really getting is, is we're getting alerted by our seams that our AVs are catching things, right? So we're not getting anything useful out of that information um, other than the system that we're running is working. <clears throat> and then lastly, like I touched on before with the critical infrastructure, you could, in some instances, we're only looking at our PCI compliance areas, right? Um, we're looking at that's where the money is. Um, that's where our biggest fines are. So that's where the organization wants to invest. That's where they want to protect it. So when you start looking at your seams and the licensing costs and things like that that are getting out of control, you're looking at putting your, all of your costs into that and then kind of ignoring everything else unless it starts to hit that environment. And so with that, this kind of sum, it adds up to just pretty much a gigantic failure for everybody. Um, if you try to catch everything from the start, you end up with too much data and you're not getting anything, any value out of it that way. If you're only looking at your PCI environments and things like that, you're not getting enough data to actually get a big picture of your environment. And the last thing is, is where this kind of comes in all together is, is the data that we're getting into, if we're either getting too much or too little, how actionable is that data? Like I said, we're getting notified that our next gen antivirus is, is stopping something, but we have users on our network that are 
front end users that are admin users that are explicitly calling uh, WMIC or PS exec and moving laterally across the network when they really shouldn't be using those and we're not seeing things like that necessarily through those products. <clears throat> so kind of starting out with this, I want to look at the um, Windows event logs and some of the some of the ways to look at what would be built in functionality that would exi already exist without having to install any additional components to be able to maybe find some information. Um, first and foremost is the system, the system event log. Uh, that's typically going to give you things like service information, service installation information, what status it is, um, and you might get some Windows update information out of that as well. Uh, the next one is the application log. We'll see things like installed events, and then you'll see some of your security events and, window and antivirus events will actually log into the application lo system log. And then the last one is the security log is pretty much the next, where, next place to look at for all your, all your information. Um, it's where pretty much the bread and butter for everything on, your, on that system is going to be. That's going to give you things like your logged on events, who's logging into, in and out of the system. Um, it'll give you auditing, process creation, process termination, things like that are all going to be contained within, within the security log. Um, so kind of when I first started out in IT, I started looking at my window or at my event logs and Everybody probably recognizes Event Viewer, right? So the thing about this is it's hard to get actionable data out of Event Viewer. Um, when it's pretty much going through each thing step by step, and then each message, things like that are going to be kind of, kind of different within the environment. Um, between, depending upon which log you're looking at. So it's hard to get good things at scale to do your collaborate, your uh, event correlation and things like that. So where that's changed with this, let's see here, coming back. Is you can start getting at that information using PowerShell um, a lot easier. And if you look at, um, there's one command, there's actually two commandlets, one I'll talk about right now. Uh, get event log is going to be probably, for looking at your basic system information, you can use this to get, to get at that stuff directly through PowerShell. Um, the, you can use different filters, you can, you can query things by type using it. Um, and then you can look by source log. And then I'll talk about it a little bit later more in depth, but you can take the output of it with, the thing that's nice about PowerShell is the output of everything is a custom object or it's an object. And then you can format that to create a custom object. So when you start wanting to analyze and move the data around, you can take the message if you, like with the event messages, you can take, if you know the, the specific ID, you can enumerate through that to create an, an object that you can put into some place that you can then have better analytics against. Um, the only thing with that is, is when we talk about the original system logs that I'm kind of going over now, the um, discrepancies between the formatting and between the types of messages do exist. So, uh, Coming back over here. So what you'll see is the message itself is this right, is going to be right here. Um, each new line in the typical message is terminated just with the, with the new line terminator. But when you look at the message between the application log, between the system log, between the security log, each one's going to necess not necessarily going to be formatted exactly the same. So you can't just take a generic and build the object out that way. Um, so like, the 
the best example is going to be when you start getting into your security events and as you can see this is the message here that's going to be where everything else was just one line before in the other events that I was showing the this is that entire body is going to be the message each line itself is going to be a, a a new event so when you start getting into some of the formatting things like that that's where it starts to become a little bit more difficult to work with um, one of the things that I found is, is if you take that output and you do a split on the new line and build an array out of it and then look through that knowing where the inform which part of the array the information is that you want to get at you'll start seeing you'll you can start querying the data a little bit a little bit more easy um, and that's where doing the things like building the custom objects and things like that will really start to help you so going back to the slideshow and then the last thing and the other reason why like working with PowerShell becomes a lot better than just doing things like within the event viewer is because of the commu the computer name switch um, you start being able to see your correlation that way um, if I want to run a command on one si if I see something like PS exec being ran on one system um, if you anybody's familiar with a like Japanese cert they did a manual about lateral movement techniques and you can and get event correlation so you can see things like if PS exec is ran on one system what's it going to look like what's it going to do on the other host so you can start you see it on one system you can use the computer name switch to then crawl your network look for all systems on your domain and see where it was executed and on the uh, other system so you can do that with the with you said this cert Japanese cert manual or um, minor attacks framework you can use known indicators through that as well to be able to, de to detect lateral movement that you may, may be missing through your seam and other tools that you have <coughs> so the last thing within the windows logs is the windows event forwarding um, that if you have the ability to it's actually a built-in centralized logging solution in Windows that not a lot of people are using. Um, Jessica Payne put together an article in 2015. Um, if you search for her and monitoring what matters, it'll give you, you'll be able to find that article on the TechNet site. And in summary, it talks about even if you are using a seam, that this information could be, this could be beneficial to your environments because of the systems that you're not catching. It gives you a centralized area to look at. So instead of having to see that it's at, see something in the event and then crawl your network looking for that data, it's all in a centralized location. So you see the event fire and in, in the log, you can also look for the corresponding event for, and the different system that it ran on at that point. Um, and then the other benefit to the Windows event forwarding is, is that when you're first setting it up, when we talk about the information overload, you can select what you want to be able to put into the log. So if you want to only focus on your user tracking events, you can do that. If you only want to look at the process events and look at what's being, what processes are running on your networks, you can do that as well. And it's a great way for you to be able to look at everything without being overloaded on the amount of data that's coming through and trying to make sense of all of that at the exact same time. So with that, that kind of leads me into a little bit more talking about Sysmon and adding that into this type of framework. Um, it's been around for quite a while. Uh, it's part of the Sys internal suite of apps. And when you start getting into logging specific types of events, it's incredibly useful for that. Um, there's quite a bit of information out there in and around it. Um, and in my experience working with it, the general purpose of like the events are all standardized into the same type of a message output. So we don't start running into 
the same type of scenario that I was talking about with the system and event logs where every message is different, you can start parsing those messages as they come in and they're in the same format. So once you kind of have your object output to work with, it's the same format pretty much for all the events that are firing. There might be, each event is standardized by it, but the way that the type is, you can build objects on the fly. Um, and then some of that may seem like duplication with the system and security logs. And while it might be, um, there's a additional, more advanced information that you can get out of it um, that you might not necessarily catch, things like process hooking. Um, and then you can even take it one step further by putting out some, there's some great articles in and around filtering it. Um, Swiss on security puts out the decent security um, on their site for de decentsecurity.com. They put out a XML file that you can load in for the configuration that will kind of filter out some of the duplicate things. Uh, Matthew Graber puts out a lot, uh, or he did a great write up on the Spectre Ops blog talking about um, how he uses, or how he actually builds custom configurations within Sysmon as well. And then um, the last one would be Carlos Perez is constantly writing new and updated articles in and around it as well. So when you install it, you're just going to download it from the Sys internal site on Microsoft's site, um, and then you'll just run it with a, a dash I switch and that'll install it. It runs as a service on the system that you're running it on. Um, and you have to be an administrator to be able to install it or, or mod modify it on the system um, starting out. And then, like I said, it'll, you can, from the configuration standpoint, you can centralize or decentralize the configuration files, and that's kind of a choose your own adventure on how you want to do that. Um, you can, it, there's pluses and minuses to both. Um, either way, like one, of, I've seen it pushed out through, do, through group policy to each individual system, and then I've seen it where people have talked about just having a file share that all systems access with the config file loaded within that. Um, So, doing the same thing with PowerShell, um, running through. You, you can still get to the same law, the same way that you would have you would interact with the system application logs and that you'd still, you're still able to get at the syslog events. The difference is, is if you look at the command list that you're actually using instead, it's this get point event. That's actually, there's, I don't know why they do it, but there's two, they, there's two different ways that you can interact with the system logs. And one was the get event log, like I showed you earlier, but you can't work with any of the advanced, more modern uh, system logs with get event log. That's only for like your basic five event logs um, to look at. Whereas get one event, like if you, you know how they have Microsoft's, the, the, the like 50, 60 different Microsoft event logs underneath in their advanced system. That's how you would look at that and be able to query on that operation. So when, what I'm doing here is taking the Sysmon messages and I'm just looking for anything with the process creation. And this logic right here is taking this hash table for that's looking for those events and dumping it into a filter so that it can run through and query what the exact information that I'm looking for. In this case, I'm just pulling the first object, but then right here is where pretty much all the logic is. And that is taking the output and converting it to an, an actual custom PS object. By doing that, it now takes the message, it formats it as an object, so then I can now, if I want to put it into a CSV file to load into a database so that I can get additional collection data there, um, if I want to 
just load it into Excel and look at events there, I can do that. So it's one of the, it's a, that's one of the things that you can do that you can't do, that you can do with Sysmon that you can't necessarily do with the output from all of the Windows logs. And the thing is, is if I change my event ID, um, which I think three, no. No matter what my event ID is, the same format of the message, it, the, the way that it um, formats the output of the message, it doesn't matter how many lines or what's in there, it will be able to, you're able to take the logic and determine what your process ID is, what your target names are. So the names and everything like that are all formatted the same on each line. So when you split, like I was talking about being able to split into a new line, build an array, and then split off of that string, it's the same type of concept so that you're able to then parse the data a lot easier and um, be able to see, get at things that are going on on your network a little bit better. Um, it's not, like I said, it's not something that you necessarily have to use and there's benefits to it, but it's also not necessarily meant to scale the way that people have been using it. Um, but it is, a, it is an additional tool that you can use in, in your arsenal to be able to get at the information that you have. Um, so pretty much from there, um, where can you, what, what can you do? You can do pretty much, if you can log it, you can then start building logic off of it. You don't necessarily need a seam to be able to do it. Um, you can also use it, use this information as a way to tweak your, your existing seam without actually making modifications to it while it's running in production and so you're not messing with any of the data logic that you're already getting. So it's a way to kind of see what's happening. You can mess with your audit policies and then just take the information from, from, these lo from those logs off of your audit policies to make sure that you're getting actionable data out of that as well. Um, and then in my case, like probably where it clicked the most with me for this type of scenario was I didn't really have anything monitoring my Active Directory environment at the time, but I wanted to be able to see who was, mod any type of, any time a modification on any type of special event on my domain, I wanted to be able to see that, ha that happen. So I had a scheduled task that ran periodically um, that would go and get all the events that occurred within since the last time the scheduled task ran, and it would look at those and then see if there were any group additions and look at, see things like if a user modified my domain admins group, for example, and it would tell me that that group got modified, and it would tell me who modified it, and it would tell me the time, and then I could go back to whoever did that to make sure that it was actually, there was a legitimate reason why it was happening. Um, and so, if you don't have the tools, it's a way that you can start getting some of that insight and then you can start using that as even potentially like as a proof of concept to get you those tools later on down the road. So more information, um, like I said, you can look at, up Carlos Perez um, and Jessica Payne are two people that kind of talk about this a little bit more in depth. Um, Jessica actually just wrote one back in December that was really interesting about doing something similar with the event forwarding and loading, it, loading the data into um, BI to get more analytics and, and some of the Microsoft, the Azure automation behind it to be able to parse your events and alert off of that. Um, and then the Spectre Ops group puts out quite a bit of information. Um, and normally when they put out a tool, they'll talk a little bit about Sysmon um, and, con and configurations like that as well. And then last is the Swift on Security log um, Twitter handle. Uh, there's quite a bit of information under there as well. So if you wanna talk to me more about it, um, I'm on Twitter at fpieces. Um, you can email me at my OWASP email address. And then I'm on numerous different Slack channels, but these ones here are the primary ones that I'm on. Um, so with that, I'll kind of open it up for any questions that anyone might have.
I'm not sure on the things that aren't being caught by default. And when I'm starting out looking at the things that are running in my environments and that, I'm looking at the types of processes that are being created um, and where they're being ran from and that type of information. And the thing is, is like, when I talk about things like that, there's a lot of legit, there's a lot of new tool, tools that are being, that are used for legitimate purposes that aren't being used legitimately anymore. <laughs> And so making sure or checking, finding out if those types of things are running on your and where they're running from and if they're supposed to be running from there. So did you implement this in your enterprise? Did you enable PSXX? I'm sorry? Do you, do you use PSXX to execute this on Google Cloud? Not in my current neighborhood, in, in the current environment, no. So I, um, I won't use, or, PS exec like, is now one of those things that it's disabled. I'll push people towards using PowerShell remoting, things like that, versus using PS exec. Um, so that's just something that I know that I can I can I can alert on because I know that it's not going. It should not be legitimately being used in my environment. All right, and thank you everybody.